Hello everyone, welcome back to another tutorial. Today we are going to see how we can work with uh, Raspberry Pi digital GPIOs in CodeSys. So basically what we are going to see is how we can access uh, Raspberry Pi digital IOs and also see how we can read those IOs and also set those uh, IOs uh, from uh, the CodeSys side. So as a prerequisite, uh, just make sure that you have a uh, Codices Control Runtime for Linux ARM installed already on your Raspberry Pi. If you have not done that already, there is uh, a video on that. It takes you through, uh, through a step-by-step -step, process of on how to install uh, Codices Control Runtime for Linux ARM on your Raspberry Pi. And then uh, let's continue. So I'll create here uh, a, a new project. I'll call uh, the project name Raspberry Pi GPIOs because uh, that is what we want to look at specifically. I'll click OK here and I'll select um, my device here. So if you have installed uh, Codices Control Runtime for Linux ARM, your device or should appear here. So that's what I'll select here, which I'll work with. Um, let's work in Ladder today. So Ladder Diagram as our programming language and then uh, click OK, create a project here, and then uh, proceed. So like we've said, uh, you've already installed uh, Codices Control Runtime for Linux ARM on your Raspberry Pi. So the first thing we have to do is we want to identify the uh, pins we want to work with. So this is the uh, pin out uh, diagram for uh, uh, Raspberry Pi Theory B+. And here you have to identify first the pins you want to work with. So here I've already identified the pins that I want to, to work with. So I work with uh, GPIO 23, GPIO 24, GPIO 25, and then GPIO 26. So I'll be working with uh, four uh, GPIOs. And in this uh, specific tutorial, first we are going to see how we, work, we can work with uh, inputs. And then in later videos, we shall see how also we can work with outputs and then things of the kind. But for the first um, video under this series, we are just going to see how we can work with inputs and then we shall see the rest uh, later. But uh, again, four pins here, 23, 24, 25, and 26. And these are going to be configured as input pins. So a little bit of uh, how I've made my connections. So I, ha I have this four by four uh, button uh, matrix here, which has 16 uh, buttons here. So I can generate up to 16 uh, inputs at the same time. But I'm working with just four, so that's, I'll just work with the first uh, four buttons here. Uh, as you can see, it has uh, eight pins here where you can make connections from. And uh, the way it works is that it has the first four pins specify a, a column. So column four, common, column three, column two, and column one. And then the last four pins here specify a row. So row one, row two, row three, row four. So that means that if I'm working with column one, I'll connect uh, VCC to column one, and then I can read off uh, uh, row one, row two, row three, and row four. So column one is this here, and then I have row one, row two, row three, and row four. Something if I wanted to work with column two, that is this um, column here, I would connect the VCC to column two here, and then I can read off row one, row two, row three, and row four. Something with column three, I would connect VCC to column three, this one here, then I can read off row one, row two, row three, and row four. And then column four, same thing. I connect VCC to column four here, and then I can read off, read off row one, row two, row three, row four. If I want to read all the 16 buttons here, all the 16 inputs, then that means I have to connect column one, column two, column three, and column four, then I can read off row one, row two, row three, row four for each column. But since I want to work with only four of these uh, input puts, then I just connect only column one, that is the VCC here, and then row one, this button here will connect to my pin, that is 23 here, row 2 to 24, row 3 to 25, and then row 4 to 26. That is how the connection is uh, really very simple, straightforward. Uh, this uh, button uh, matrix is re really comes in handy because you have a, um, can generate a lot of inputs with it, and uh, it's, um, you don't need any extra connections or things. things of, it's clean, it's decent, and uh, it makes your work really easy. So that's why I, um, I decided to use this. But you can use any other uh, input generators of your choice. It doesn't really matter. As long as you connect them to the uh, buttons, that, uh, pins that you want to work with, and um, that's it, basically. So this is my connection. We shall see the real thing later after we've uh, made some progress. But yeah, let's uh, proceed. Now that my project uh, has loaded here, been created, uh, the first thing we want to do is um, 
we want to add one um, module or device here that we will use to access uh, the GPIO module on the Raspberry Pi. So you right click on your device here, you go to add device, under miscellaneous here, you see you have a, this uh, GPIO device here. This is what you want to add basically. So you click add device and you, when you look under your device tree, you see that you have a, a module here or call it a device under your um, main device here. So main device is the Raspberry Pi here, like we said. So control running control, policy is control and runtime for Linux ARM. And then under that you have this uh, uh, GPIO module there, your device. So you want to right click on this or double click, put it uh, correctly. And then what you want to do is uh, you can configure a few things here. You can configure the bus cycle or you can leave uh, it to this use parent bus cycle there. Apart from that, there is nothing more to configure here. So we shall proceed. And then on this module, now we can add our GPIOs as we, as we wish. So you can add uh, which GPIOs you want, you want to work with. So you right click on that, you go to add device. And then here you have uh, a few options. So you can add one one GPIO, so that is this one bit option here. So it says one bit in or out. So you add one G, uh, GPIO, it can be configured as um, an input or output, or you can add a, a, a bunch of 16 uh, GPIOs. So this is 16 bits, either input or output. So you can configure them still as inputs or outputs, or you can just add four. So that, those are the three options you have. You can either add one, you can either add four, or you can add 16 of those. So since I'm working with four, I'll go with this uh, option of adding four. But if you're working with more than four, then you can add 16. Or if you want to add, for example, eight, you can add two bunches of four. For example, I can add here, and then I can go ahead and add another four again. Oh, sorry, like that. So I, had to, I have two uh, uh, bunches of four, but I don't need those. I just need one, so I'll delete this. And now here is now where I configure my, um, how I should read and um, the direction and everything. So if you come here uh, under GPIO sys FS module parameters, you'll see that uh, each GPIO can, can be configured in, in various ways. So first of all, you can configure it uh, you can configure the, di the direction. So direction means, is it uh, being used as an input or output? Or you can even leave it as not used. So if you want, if you leave it, at non leave it as not used, then it will not be used, it will be ignored. But you can configure it as input or you can configure it as output. So what you do is you right click on this, you double click rather on this, and then you can select from the dropdown here, you can select input or output. So all my GPIOs are inputs, so I'll select that as input. Then you can select, uh, here you configure the G GPIO pin number. So remember we have from pin 23, 24, 25, and 26. So I configure the first one as 23 there. And then here is you can configure it as active law or uh, of simply by setting it to true or false. So in simple terms, active law uh, describes how your pin is activated. So if it's, uh, your pin is configured as active law, uh, that means that your pin, pin will be activated when you pull it low, in other words, when it connects to the ground or to zero. So if your pin is zero, when there is zero, zero volts on that pin, then that pin will be uh, activated. But then now, uh, if it's not active low, in other words, it's active high, that means your pin is activated when you pull it to high uh, voltage. So when you connect it to 3.3 volts or five volts, then your pin will be activated uh, in that way. So I want my pins to be um, active high. In other words, I want to be, them to be activated when I pull them to, uh, 3.3 or 5 volts. So I'll leave, uh, I'll set active law to false here. So I'll set all my pins to active law, uh, rather to, I'll set all my pins active law to false because I want them to be activated uh, on uh, high voltage. Uh, I want them to be active high. So I'll do the same thing with um, the second uh, the GPIO here. So first of all, I'll set it to input first, pin number is 24 and then active law is false. Third pin again, this is input, uh, pin number is 25 there, and then active law is also false. And then the th fourth one here is 26, this input again 26, and then active law is false as well. So just like that, I've configured my pins there. 
Uh, before we proceed, let's see uh, the connections that I've done. So it will give you a, a little bit of an overview of how I've made my connections and everything. So let's do that and then uh, we shall continue. So here is my simple um, setup. Uh, I have this uh, four by four button matrix, like I've already explained. So those are all the buttons, 16 of them. And then you can see that I've connected VCC here to column one there, and then the four wires there, row one to row four. So I have the, all these four buttons here that I'm going to be working with. And then I've connected that. Again, you can see VCC here. This is, I'm using 3.3 .3 volts, but you can, you can use four volts as well, or rather five volts. But I'm using 3.3 .3 here. And then I have all my, so I have uh, pin 23 there. That is the orange light, um, wire you see there. Then I have the yellow 24, the green 25, and then the blue there, 26. So very, very simple, very easy, nothing complicated. Everything is uh, straightforward. So that's what I have here. Okay, now that we've seen uh, the setup there, let's uh, proceed. So for us to capture the state, of these uh, inputs, we shall create some uh, um, variables here, four variables to represent the state of each of the GPIOs. So I'll name the first variable G, uh, x input, for example, underscore one. So I'll type ball. Then I'll have x input underscore two, which is also of type ball. X input three. So type bool, and then x input four. So of type bool there. So for variables, each one will will, um, represent, will capture the state of each of the inputs. So how do we use the uh, GPIOs in our code? Basically, we we when you go here to GPIOs module IO mapping, you can see that each channel here, so each channel represents one uh, GPIO. It has it, uh, one address. And then depending on uh, whether it's uh, input or output, then the address would differ. So you can see all the uh, inputs here uh, start with IX, and then all the outputs start with uh, QX. So QX output and then IX uh, is input. So each channel has um, its uh, own address, like we said. And then using this address, then I can capture or I can get the status of the input or of the GPIO and then use that in my code. For example, I've declared here for variables. So I'll map each uh, or I'll assign each of the uh, channels there to one of these uh, variables so that I can get the state of the GPIO and then use that state in my code. So what I would do here is... Um, I'm working in ladder. Remember, I, I we created one uh, program unit here. So I'm going to uh, assign each of these variables to uh, capture the state of uh, of our inputs here. So what we shall do there is really very simple. We shall add uh, a contact here, a normal open contact, and then at the end we shall add a coil. So the coil will be our variable here. And then for the contact, we shall just get the address of, of the input. So input one or pin one, we shall use this uh, ix 0, 0.0. So we come back here and we say this is ix 0, 0.0. So we just use the address of, of that uh, uh, channel and then we assign it to this uh, variable here. So that means if this, um, our contact is closed. In other words, the um, pin is active, then our, our variable here will also be uh, set true and then vice versa. We shall add uh, another um, another network. So let's put everything on, 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 on different network. Add another network. And then here we shall add again a coil and then we shall add, sorry, we shall first add a contact and then add a coil. And then third network as well, add a contact and then add a coil 
and then for the fourth pin again we add a contact there and then we shall add a coil as well so we have input one here we have uh, input two then we have uh, the address here is i x 0 0.1 then we have uh, input three And then we have ix 0 0.3, other 0.2. Sorry, I forgot to put the percent there. And then for four input, so x input underscore four, we have percent ix 0 0.3 there. So if we come back here, you can see that we have 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and 0 0.4. And we've mapped those, all of them accordingly. So there we have 0 0.1, input 1, 0, 0 0.0, input 1, 0 0.1, input 2, 0 0.2, input 3, and 0 0.3, input 4 there. And that should do it for us. The other thing we want to do is we can visualize these, um, the states of this input star. So. In a visualization page so let's add that as well so we shall come here to application right click add visualization there let's add one visualization page and then we can visualize all these uh, the state of these uh, inputs and visually they are in our uh, visualization page so let's do that okay page has been created i'll change the background here real fast Set it to that color. You can set any color you feel like. It doesn't really matter. And then what I want to do is I want to use some, uh, I'll use some ellipse here or circle or call it whatever you want to call it. Make sure the dimensions are the same here, just like that. Then I'll use, um, I think I'll use a rectangle as well to put the text there. Something like this. I think I'll push this to the front, so, and then I'll use some lamps. So, drop a lamp here. Resize it a little bit. Around there. Then I'll add some text here to, uh, just to keep track of or to show which input is which or we are working with so i'll just say input one i'll confirm this a little bit give it a different font and and everything so and the properties i'll just come to font here i'll use um this maybe font size is 14 something like that then I'll just copy this because I have four of those. You can just copy and paste. Copy and paste. Copy and paste. Then maybe I can make also these lamps to have different colors for each input. So I'll change that accordingly. So I'll change this to red. I'll change this to green. Then I'll change this to, let's say, blue. Then I'll map uh, each uh, state variable. I'll map uh, to each lamp a state variable. So I'll come here, browse under application. I have my variables here. So this one will be controlled by input one. This one will be controlled by input two. There, this one will be controlled by input three. Then this one will be controlled by input four. Okay, that is that, that is done. Um, now I've almost done, I'm almost, we are ready to test this out. One thing that I want to point out is, um, you can see during the parameter configuration here, when you set these parameters here for each uh, pin, you can't change these parameters during runtime. 
we shall see there is uh, another way where we can have more control during runtime for example during runtime we can change the direction of this pin to in the input or output we can also change even the number there but if you configure it in this way then you can't change these properties during runtime when you configure pin to be input and the pin number is 23 and it's active low false then you can't change that but in another video in a later video we shall see where you have even more control you can set the properties of each pin during runtime according to the state of your program or based on certain conditions that you set but for the start here we are looking at this type of configuration where you can't change these properties after you've loaded the code on your uh, raspberry pi there but later we shall see that we can actually use another method where we have co more control but i just wanted to put that out there so that you you know exactly uh, what we've done here so now we are ready to test this. We want to connect first to our Raspberry Pi. So we come to tools, update Linux ARM. We have to put um, the uh, SSH login credentials here. You scan for your Raspberry Pi, select it from that uh, list there, and then make sure that the uh, runtime has started so you can click start runtime there. And then runtime has started now. And then what we want to do, we want to close that. Um, and then we want to go to device here. We want to scan network. Raspberry Pi is there, select it, click OK. Enter your uh, management account credentials. And then, sorry, username here, password here. Click OK. Okay, now you have connection to your Raspberry Pi. Now you can uh, upload your code. So upload code, you can first build, make sure you have no errors. Okay, build successful, no errors. Now we can upload code there, yes. Okay, code has uploaded, uh, we can click run. You can see the GPIO module here is green, means that everything is okay, no problems whatsoever. Uh, okay, now what we want to do is now to start uh, generating those inputs. The so network one, there we have uh, input activated, input deactivated. Network two, input activated, input deactivated. Network three, input activated, input deactivated. And then ne network four, the last one down here, input activated. Input deactivated. We can also check out uh, from our visualization page. And then we can see input one, there we have it. Off, input two, we have it there. Off, input three, off, and then input four. Off. And then I can try to set all of them at the same time. There you have it. I can set one and four. I can set two and three. Then I can uh, also blink one there or even four there. So basically that is it, really very simple. Now you can uh, read your inputs without from your uh, devices or from whatever sensors or uh, anything like that with your Raspberry Pi and then use the status of those inputs in, in your code and then also display them in a visualization page like we've say, seen already. Okay, so this was on just about inputs. In a later video, we shall see how we can also work with outputs. And then like I've promised, we shall see where we can actually implement this uh, uh, same functionality, but have more control. For example, if I wanted to change input one from uh, and direction from input now to an output, then I would have to stop everything, modify the code, and then upload it again. But we shall see a scenario where you can actually do that during runtime without having to stop uh, your code and then program and then uh, changing things in the code. So we shall see that in a later uh, video again. But yeah, that is it for um, this very short and brief tutorial. Uh, thank you and have a nice day.